guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a very quick, short, sharp video, and we're just gonna be chatting about contraception and pretty much everything in my past and what I'm deciding to do with my future regarding contraceptive methods. I found that when I posted the other day about it, very slightly touching on it, I had so, so many inquiries, so many questions, so many requests for a video on all of the stuff that I know regarding it. I am not a professional. I'm also not very in-depth with my knowledge. I just know what I have experienced and spoke to other girls about and spoke to my doctors and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to be touching base on today. But yeah, let's just go straight ahead. So the very first thing that we're going to be touching base on is my past with contraceptive methods, what I did, all that sort of stuff, how it made me feel and how my sort of hormones were regulated by it, blah, 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 blah. So I got my period when I was 17 years old. I had just turned 17. I think it was a little bit later than a, a lot of other people in my friendship groups and all that sort of stuff. So I was pretty much ready. I was sort of at the point where I was like, okay, come on, b let's go. Like, why have I not, why has it not come yet? Like I started freaking out a little bit because all my girlfriends had it when they were like 13, 14, 15. And I was literally like graduating that year. So I was like, okay, this is weird. I also had a boyfriend for like four years and it was something that, I mean, it was good at the time that I didn't have it but as soon as I did get it I made sure that I went on a contraceptive method the first one was the pill so my doctor prescribed me that my mum said it was probably the best one for me to go on at that time I don't think she had a very good insight into actual contraception stuff but she just wanted me to not have babies so I completely understand I completely understand mum I don't hold you, you know, accountable for that. Once I had gone on that, that was, I was on that for about two to three years and it was okay during the time. It, it regulated everything. I didn't feel like I had spikes in my hormones. I didn't feel like my mood swings were too bad. Um, I had regular periods. Everything was pretty much a-okay until I came off it. So that was when I was about 20. I came off it for maybe six or so months. And in that time, my skin just went ham. Like it broke out. It was insanely bad. It was cystic acne. I had some really sore pimples. I had just not it, you know, it's just not a nice feeling getting that, especially coming from pretty relatively good skin and then hitting that stage and it just being like, what? Like I, I hit puberty at 17. Why didn't I, why did I not get acne then? Why did I get it three years later after I came off the pill? So that was something that I was like, oh, it didn't over like run my life. I think I did pretty well with it considering how bad it was. I'll try and get like a little screenshot of it and put it up on here for you guys so you can see how bad it is. But that was the after pill acne. And from what I found out, that happens to a lot of girls. So if you're on the pill and you're wanting to come off, get ready for that one. It's not fun. Anyway, so once I had sort of gone through that process, I did a whole heap of things to try and get my skin on track again. I saw a dermatologist. She's been amazing for my skin since. I actually did like two or three months on a very small dosage of Occutane, which is just a more dilated version of Rakutane. And it did a little bit, but it ultimately just made my skin super dry, flaky, really bad for me because I was always out in the sun. Obviously I wore sunscreen, but I would burn straight away. So it was something that I trialed, didn't really stick to it, came off it and just thought, you know what, I'm just going to try and get around this a natural, more natural way and just push through the acne kind of thing until we see if it was actually an after pill acne or if it was like a long term thing that's just sort of been held off. So my skin started getting better and better. I was working with my dermatologist, getting some skin needling and stuff once it was time for me to be able to do that after the Occutane. And I decided to go on the bar. So I got the bar, the Implanon in my arm. So this lasts for three years. And over my three year period, I would say it was just as good as the bar, except on my third, actually, between throughout the three years, there were some irregularities. So the first year I didn't have any period whatsoever. So I was loving life, but deep down I knew that was not a good thing. Like I don't think your body should be stopped from doing anything naturally, including something that we hate for one week every month. So I didn't get it at all for that first year. Second year, I got it regularly. So I was like, sweet, like I'm all good. My body must've just adjusted to it, sweet. Third year, which is the year that it's meant to come out at the end of that year, I got it irregularly. I would get it for maybe like a week and then I wouldn't get it for two months and then I would get it for a week and then I wouldn't get it for three months and then 
a week and I wouldn't get it for maybe two weeks. So it was really irregular and it pissed me off. Like it seriously just annoyed me. I'd rather know when my period was coming and know how long that time is for and how I'm, you know, how I'm going to be feeling in that stage rather than just to be so sporadic and just be out shopping and get my period even though I thought it wasn't going to come for another week or so. So it was something that really pissed me off. So I ended up getting the implant on taken out. Six months before I got my implant on taken out, I actually went to Instagram and I asked about contraceptive methods, what people use, and I just wanted to know more information. I was very uneducated on the matter and the responses I got back were in the thousands, like thousands and thousands of responses. I still have messages in my unread messages, my requests from girls who had responded to that that I couldn't get back to. So it's something that I was like, wow, like, I like there's so much information out there just from people and their knowledge. So... The responses that I got back for that were 80% maybe, I would literally say four or 5,000 responses saying from girls that they don't even use a contraceptive. They track their cycles naturally and they use protection like a condom or there's other forms of protection as well when they are ovulating for having, so in that time when they're having sex, in that ovulation period, that's when they wear protection. Some of them wear protection their whole life some don't wear it at all and they just don't have sex in that time. It was a very wide array of answers. Then we had the marina, the injection, the pill. A lot of girls recommended the pill and I was like, no, don't recommend me the pill. Been there, done that, not about it, not going back there. People were like, why don't you get the bar put back in? And I said, look, if worse comes to worse and that's my best freaking option, then maybe. But not if I have something better. So I was looking through it and every other type of contraceptive scared the shit out of me. Like the responses of the injection were like, oh yeah, the injection's great, but I got pregnant within a week. I got pregnant within a month. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like what? And then they were just like, and it's just annoying to have to upkeep going and getting an injection every three months or so or whatever it was. The marina was insane. Like the amount of messages I got out of things that scared the shit out of me. There was a girl that said that she had stabbing pains for months and months until she got it out because it wasn't inserted properly into her lady parts. So what it is, if you guys don't know, and this is what I know in depth anyway, but it's pretty much like a metal rod that sits in your lady parts and it, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to go into depth, but it just sounds bad, you know? And a lot of girls loved it, but for every person that were giving good responses from it, there was like three or four that were bad. There were girls saying that they bled nonstop for two, three months straight after getting it inserted. People had to obviously just get it removed because it wasn't working for their body. Some girls have had it for 10 years. So it was sort of something where I was like, oh my gosh, like that just makes me feel sick, to be honest. Even the good and the bad together, like, ew. Um, and then there were other ones, obviously, like, going back to the bar, all those sort of things. And when I was thinking about the girls that didn't have any contraceptive method and they just sort of winged it with their apps and stuff, I was like, that's so risky. Like that is so risky. Anyway, six months later, I came home from America of four or five months. And I, I mean, it was time for me to get my bar taken out. I don't have a boyfriend here. He's in America. I don't think I'm going to be able to see him until at least 2021. So it was like the perfect time for me to come off my contraceptive. So I took the bar around, all's well, and I am currently tracking my period. I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. If I get my period to a regular sort of cycle and I can completely, I can track it day by day, then I will do that because just how I feel coming off my contraceptive, coming off my Implanon is like worth it. It's, it's so worth it. And my skin had a little bit of a breakout. It's still having sort of ups and downs now, I guess, because it doesn't have those extra hormones, estrogen, whatever it is that these contraceptive methods push out into our bodies because it doesn't have that. It's sort of trying to figure out and reconfigure how my skin, how my body's going to work from here on out, but I'm loving it. I just feel a lot lighter in myself. I feel a lot happier. I feel just overall really good. And usually I wouldn't feel like this, especially in a time like COVID, especially in a time where I can't get a like strict workout schedule happening, especially in a time where I just want to sit in bed and eat caramel 12s. 
like I wouldn't feel like this. I'd feel slumpy and gross, but I actually feel really good and I'm very comfortable with myself. My skin did have a little bit of a breakout. Like I said, it does every now and then, but it is definitely on the road to getting better and naturally better, not with all that added shit into it. So absolutely loving life at the moment. I'm gonna quickly show you guys the app that I use and then that'll be it. If you guys have any questions, make sure you let me know below. But the app that I was sort of recommended by so many girls is Flow. So on the Flow app, Oh, it's saying I got my period in eight days. Love that for me. So they have a little virtual assistant. Assistant, I don't need to right now, so you could go. But you have your calendar. In the red is when you've had your period, when you are, you know, in that stage. And then the blue, I don't know if it's the actual blue. Yes, is your ovulation week. So they give you a week, but really your ovulation days are like two to three days where you have a high chance of getting pregnant. So obviously wear protection, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, let's go back to my first day of my period. So I logged, oh, let's go, what you, what you doing? Okay, here we go. So let's go back to my period as of the 21st of June. Shout out to my cycle sisters if you're on my cycle. I love that. But anyway, so 21st of June was my last day one of my period. I had a heavy flow. This is this may be TMI, but if it is TMI, just skip. It tracked my steps, it tracked how much I walked, and you can put in symptoms. So I put in the symptom that I was having a heavy flow, always is on my first day, it goes very light and medium afterward. And then you have a whole heap of other stuff. So for this particular day, I felt like I had quite a few breakouts. So I did put in that I had acne, acne, even though it was a couple of pimples, but that's one of the things. So I'm just gonna go to a free day. Let's go to today. And I'm gonna log in and show you guys what you can do. So first of all, if you're on your period, you can click light, medium, or heavy. That's at the top, it's not here anymore. Then you can track your weight, track your sleep, and track your water intake, which is, I think is a really good thing. Your sex and your sex drive, so you can click on what it is that you feel your sex drive was like this particular day. Your mood, so you've got calm, happy, energetic, frisky, all of these types of things. And you, again, you can click on that and it's gonna track how you feel. And it's gonna pretty much preempt that for your next cycle, which is really cool, because if you are feeling that little bit gross or icky, or you're feeling a a little bit extra frisky or horny, you're gonna know why. If you go onto your app, you're gonna know why. Symptoms, vaginal discharge, and other. And other is just travel stress, disease or injury, alcohol, all of the stuff that may impact how you're feeling on that given day. So you just track that in and then it'll adjust it for your next cycle and it'll pretty much take in your months, two, three months worth of information and really narrow it down to what your cycle looks like for you every month. Whether it's a 30 day cycle or it's even longer, it doesn't really matter because you can adjust it on the app. The last thing that they have on here as well is like a little for you page and courses so that you can get more informative on what you want to do. So for example, this one has cramp relief roadmap, mastering your orgasm, taking control of back pain, healthy eating on a budget. So it's got a lot of stuff regarding women's health on there as well, which I think is awesome because not only is it an app that you can sort of rely on for your cycle and understanding your hormones and what's going on in your woman body, but also you can learn some more information on how to treat certain things naturally, all of this sort of stuff, coronavirus, sex and cycle, healthy snacks, tips and recipes, breakup survival guide, like these things are something that I get asked all the time. It is, I think, a paid app. It's like a per month or yearly app, but it's definitely worth it. So if you're looking at not going on contraceptive, I 100% recommend it. Make sure you stay safe in that ovulation period. Make sure you have a regular sort of setup before you go into doing it. <laughs> before you go into doing it and then go from there. But that is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, like I said at the start, it wasn't something that was coming from a science background or anything. It was just personal opinion in my past life and what I'm doing from here on out. But yeah, so I'm just gonna continue with tracking my cycle naturally on my app and then I'll see how I go when I come around to actually having sex again. Corona, don't do this to me. <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next video.